welcome to Hamad de Mohamed, this old dog. Um, three sections, uh, pr uh, production, kick it off with production, then music theory, then a general discussion, opinion piece for some contentious, saucy opinions. Do you skip whichever section, whichever section you're not so interested in? Now to kick it off with production. Uh, at this point, he has he has um, he has a full studio ready. He has just so much equipment. Whereas when he kicked it off, most people's debut albums they just have a few bits and bobs. So that's why too there wasn't so much equipment lying around at his disposal. So it was kind of easy to say what he had. But as you can see, he has so much stuff. He even has a coffee table. So it's a full studio. It's sort of like a dream bedroom studio, if you, if you will. And so, but then on this old dog, he does keep it. He just keeps a certain number of equipment, instruments. For instance, uh, so I'll go through each kind of section, right? So first, drums. Start from kicking off with drums. First time he used the drum machine. If you know, if you can t listen to through Max whole discography, even his demos, it's always the same crispy drums. He's still going for his Neil Young, crispy crisp with some fills and things like that. But uh, this is the first time he got a, he got a Roland CR78 drum machine which is a bit more beep beep boop boop but then it also helps with wooden clicks and uh, if because for instance the first time he's ever done bossa nova drumming or rhythm he's not drumming he's doing uh, sequencing it on his drum machine so that's the first time he ever had a thrice hot discography any kind of anything that's a deviation or not his usual crispy drums so that was interesting to see that was done with a CR78, I believe, uh, and a lot of his demos are done with that as well. This old dog demos would be done with that. Those of you Radiohead fans would know it because I think that's the same one they used to try and replace their drummer. Uh, so yeah, drums. That's about it. Uh, that's about it for drums, really. Oh, and then interesting point in terms of adding to the ryth rhythm section. Sometimes he uses his acoustic guitar as a rhythmic instrument. I know any you listen to Fleet Foxes, but I think they do that really well. The, mm, they do uh, they get a good rhythm kind of just with just with the guitar and it's not even adding so much harmony it's more adding just a push. so a good example of that is on dreams from yesterday there's no kick and snare from his crispy drums because he's using that clicky clicky drum machine so on the one and three beats it's kind of his guitar that's providing the the rhythm the kick and the you know so that's just an interesting point um, Oh, then bass, bass wise, previously he recorded it out of a guitar amp and then mic'd it. Uh, I think now he just plugs it in DIs maybe, or uses an actual bass amp, I don't know. But it's not as uh, thuddy. I kind of, I really enjoyed the the bass on 2 and, and albums like that. It was a real dooch dooch, like um, kind of like another drum. But even that, I don't think, that's been since Salad Days, I think he's not used a guitar amp. So the bass isn't particularly extraordinary. Not that like it's bad, but like that it doesn't really stand out. It's nothing super of note about the bass really. Just plods along a bit in this old dog. Um, but then yeah, I think that's still linked to his Neil Young obsession. Uh, it's a cool song anyway. But but the production on that album is like so dry. I think he did it in the barn in the barn on his property or something. The drums are just like just down to the basics, just all you need. Bass is great, really dry, real crispy. Love it, love it. Yeah. So, the next one, what do we have next? We have, oh, electric guitar, I think he just said, it's used on still beating. And then, oh, synths, if you're interested in synths, I'd thoroughly recommend Reverb Machine, because they'll tell you how to get the exact sound as well. So, there's this Reverb, if you type in Reverb Machine, Mac DeMarco, I'll probably link it as well. He did, this guy he did all the synth, not all the synth sounds, but a lot of the synth sounds for this old dog. I mean, in terms of the names of synths, I think it was, the guy on the Reverb Machine article said it was mostly Roland Juno 60s, Roland D50, and then another synth I know he has is a Yamaha DX7, which I th uh, is probably because he likes his YMO Japanese synthy uh, music. So. But I don't know if there's so much Yamaha DX7 on this one. And apart from the tracks that are just fully synth based, like For the First Time and One More Love Song, songs like that on the album, uh, the synth sounds 
are fairly similar as in this old dog and dreams from yesterday. I think they're pretty similar. They're like a brass, like a, a little bit like a horn. So he doesn't mess around too, too much in the non-keys based tracks. That's all about all I have to say on the synths really, because the reverb machine does a really good job of covering that. The main bit that's different, as well as the drum machine, the first time that's changed about this album is he recorded it digitally, and uh, for this I refer you to the tape op interview that I always mention. Um, it's a really good source if you're interested in max production. And yeah, so at this point he has all these desks. I only found out about these recently. They're like outboard desks, you know, uh, if you imagine one of those classic massive studios, they have all these uh, sliders and dials. It's a small one of those, and he has a ton of them in his studio, and then he has tons of effects racks and interfaces. So it's possible that this old dog wasn't fully digital, but he did say in this interview that it was his first time using a computer. But with that, he did use a lot of outboard gear, so it's possible that a lot of the mixing was still done on on these analog mixers and with the effects racks themselves. So he said that he wanted to keep a lot of outboard gear because he felt a bit intimidated by all the plugins that they have. Uh, plugins, I don't know why I said them like that. I don't personally have any problem with plugins, but he said that he just felt there were tons of plugins, which he found a bit difficult to to handle. So he tried to kept it kept it to his, the kept to the basics, not basics, but you know, to what he was familiar with. Um, what else? Yeah, so. I mean, I don't know if it's really that noticeable, his first use of recording with a computer. I guess it, it's definitely a change though, which is I think one of the reasons he wanted to record digitally, because previous to that he'd only done a bit of recording digitally, and a lot of criticism about Mac was that, from someone like Fantano, was that he'd kind of kept the same sound. So possibly he wanted to just experiment a little bit. That came out with a good result. So. That may be one of the reasons he switched to digital a bit. And he has a massive interface, 16 channel apparently. So, you know, it goes to show he's really getting some nice gear at this point. Everyone has a one or two channel interface. I didn't know they existed. I might even be wrong about that, but yeah, 16 channel beast. Um, I think if you have any more questions about production, just, just ask, put in the comments. Mike, he said he used a Newman U870. Royer R121, which is the first time he didn't use his Roland DR80 C, which is also a pretty nice mic, but apparently according to these according to him, it's nothing compared to these mega expensive mics. Uh, and then be his sound guy, he has a sound guy now, so his sound guy told him that if he gets these nice mics he has to get a nice preamp, so he has a lot of preamps now too. Uh, so yeah, those are the mics. So he said that a lot of the production just came down to a nice mic, a splash of reverb and acoustic guitar. He's not using chorus so much, is what he said as well. Not putting as much chorus on everything. So that's pretty much the sound, yeah. A typical This Old Dog is CR80 drum machine, acoustic guitar, and maybe that brassy one. This Old Dog and Dreams From Yesterday, could, you could consider quintessential This Old Dog tracks. Thank you. So for music theory, right, I was thinking, broadly speaking on the track, it's uh, acoustic guitar or synth based. Obviously there's a few tracks which are hybrids of that, like This Old Dog and Dreams From Yesterday. They start off with whatever, acoustic guitar and then they have a bit of a synth line. So I will be referring back a bit to some other songs. So for example, we can start with My Old Man uh, as a good example of two this is more techniques, but it's slightly related to theory, and then later on I'll get into a really um, slightly deeper theory. So initially it's uh, like mild manners. And that's, that's demonstrating one, one technique is always, he does is a lot, is leaving these high, high strings like open, sort of openly voiced. Viceroy doing the same thing. It's just playing these ones sort of open, right? And then my kind of woman also pretty similar. So uh, and then what it sounds.
salad days. But Hamza, I think that's the only example of uh, that in this old dog. But I thought he'd maybe be interested in it because he does it quite a lot. I'll check if there's any more examples. Do we have any more examples? My old man. Yeah. Uh, I think that's pretty, in this old dog that's pretty much it, so it's not really specific to this old dog, but basically if you're doing that leaving open, it puts you in E minor, so that means relative major is G major, so that means you're in G major, so that means you're always using this, these chords, that kind of voicing. So, uh, My Kind of Woman, Sal Days, Viceroy, and My Old Man, they're all in that key. I don't know if any of you know Sufjan Stevens, but he has a nice song like, that makes use of that because that allows the when you play acoustically to have like a nice open feel using open chords. So uh, so you know, ni nice open feel. And to speak of open chords. On this old dog particularly, and in Mac in general, he always plays his chords up by the the capo or you know open right. He uses whereas someone like Mild High Club, they're virtually all the, the, wherever the capo is or whatever. He doesn't use open chords basically. So Mac uses a lot of open chords, which specific particularly on this old dog. There's no chords like up here. The only Mac song I can actually think of where it's not open chords is uh, freaking out the neighbor to. So that kind of gives him more of a Neil Young, uh, I don't know, not folky, because he's not really folk, he's not really even like folk chord, he's not kind of like... So in that way he's a bit of a hybrid of the two, more like jazz chord extension type things, and but then instrumentation wise it's more like a folk acoustic type thing, right? So yeah, so if you're playing in that G major, relative to caper, all, all these will be relative to caper. That's all, you can tell it's G major because 1, 4, 5, if you learn positions of 1, 4, 5s, that, that'll really help. Oh yeah, so, I won't be able to go through all the songs, but still beating. I have a full harmonic analysis on that, so check that out, that'll help you with scale degrees and um, bits and pieces like that, so yeah, please go ahead and check that out. And I mean, for tutorials for all this stuff, Jensen has loads of good ones, Keys is, they're pretty much all done for this old dog. Yeah, so back, so I mean, this probably might not, most of the music theory, I kind of have to speak in music theory terms, so I don't know how helpful it would be if you don't have a little bit of knowledge of uh, scale degrees, so like, uh, yeah, that's really, that's four, four, uh, one, four, five, that's a really classic uh, chord progression, right? So yeah, if you if he's in E minor, G major, that's that's what he uses. But then the other thing I said about hammering on. Uh, he does that in like um does that a lot in uh, this album a bit and so one another still beating like Both of those, at least the verses for them, are both in uh, D major, so that's... And I guess... So basically what I'm saying is the techniques he uses are uh, determined kind of by the key that he's in. I don't think he does these consciously, but you know, when he has... He does these little things to make them more like acoustic, like hammering on and playing open chords. Um, or... Yeah, so there's basically three techniques to pick up, right? One is the hammering on, one is the flip, like playing the open chords. So hammering on is more in, in D major, and hammering on is in most of them, apart from maybe if it's in C major. So if you're in G major, you can put these techniques in your own music if you want. Yeah, so G major, you hammer on, and then D major also like that. But then the one key is a bit different, is if you're in C major, like these chords, the one key, the one string you can always leave open is the high E, because that's the third of the C, when you're in C major. So in this key, he often does like this kind of closed. Um, you know, it's a bit more closed, slightly less open, other than the high string, using these dominant nine chords. Uh, and then one of the songs, I think, 
Wolf who wears sheep's clothes is in uh, is in KFC as well. So if you go through all the tracks on on uh, this old dog, there's still beating in one another. Oh yeah, a little note is that I don't think he does these intentionally. It's just as he's practicing along with his acoustic guitar. It's just this is how he does it to make it a bit more interesting. And then yeah, it's also a bit quite rhythmic. He uses a rhythmic instrument. I think I mentioned that in production, right? But so back to my point, which was about. Going through the track listing, right, so Mild Man is uh, G major relative to capo then, what else do we have? Um, what's, then this old dog, that would be kind of C major, but a lot of these, they kind of move out key a bit and use nice techniques, which are, uh, or uses of theory. I don't know if he actually knows theory or anything, but it's a good way of explaining it, basically. That's all theory is, it's just a, for me anyway, just a nice way of explaining things and organizing ideas in your head so that you can use them because if you don't know what he's doing huh, it's kind of quite difficult to use it in your own way right so that's the only thing and then this old dog is C Wolf of Worship plays something sign like that as well but that's a real goofy track so is um, Baby You're Out you'd have to be an absolute dweeb to bop to one of those and that's a bit off but uh, yeah they're really, um, they're really goofy um, and then I think that's a pretty simple chord progression Wolf of Worship clothes um, uh, and then it's still beating. I think that's covered most of it. Oh, then Dreams from Yesterday is more is similar style of this old dog. It's kind of C, but that one's one of the main ones I'll get to later. But that it really moves around. So that covers most of it. This old dog still beating. One another. Dreams from Yesterday. My old man. And then the other, there's like Watching Him Fade Away and Sister a bit more slowed down keys. Um, not so much acoustic. If there's some others, mention them. Go ahead. But I think. Most of them, yes. Oh, that's the other one. Moonlight on the River is the one exception. So, so far they've all been this kind of key of C, key of G, uh, and D. The key doesn't really matter too much. It's just given the voicings on the guitar, it facilitates, like I said, certain tech little ways of playing. Uh, Moonlight on the River, I'm not actually sure about this, but I think it's in, um, I think it's in F or something. Because he uses a B major a weird B major 7 with an altered note so that's the one exception really and then that's the one exception because I think he used chorus on it or electric guitar has some kind of effect maybe I don't think it's like a fully acoustic track but yeah but that's that one's a bit different from like Moonlight on the River uh, so now I can't cover all the tracks right like I said because it'd be all day especially if I'm going to do a couple on the keyboards uh, so what we're going to do the two five ones right this is a bit of uh yeah, people always say uh, jazz, I find it a bit annoying, it's a bit more interesting if you just talk about it in terms of uh, the harmony going on. But having said that, uh, in jazz, some jazz music, right, um, they use two five ones. That's just the chord progression, right? It's, uh, so, going back in time a bit, going back to Let My Baby Stay off Salad, salad Days, that's just the two five one. <laughs> That's the two five one. So if you look at it up here, A A minor seven, same up there, right? So very briefly, just change your camera, right? So uh, as I was saying, the um, let my baby stay is in uh, two two five one, right? So that you like I said. So two, if you're in key of G. The two is the A minor seven. The five is the a D, a dominant uh, D of some sort. D, whether it's D nine or it's D seven, and then um, back to G. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so like in a, this old dog, good example of this. Yeah. So let my baby stay. Just a quick note before I go on with that is, I think it's a perfect. Um, precursor to this old dog in that it could fit in perfectly on this old dog because because it's it's got that uh, bossa nova drum click thing and that wood wooden clicks and then at the same time it has the 251 right so let my baby stay I'd say is a perfect precursor to this old dog and even on another one I don't think there was really any songs that he did acoustically like that I mean they're still together but uh, I suppose you could consider that could end up on this old dog but 
you know, it doesn't, I don't know if that's as, as many too far. I think that's just a normal kind of chord progression. Whereas, let my baby stay is a sign of things to come. It was a yeah, it was a bit of an omen. So off we go. Continue. Yeah, and this old dog, right? Uh, we have on the on the chorus. This old dog. So that's a the thing about two five ones is just descending in in fifths, right? Uh, so that's a perfect fifth going up. Sorry, descending. You could consider it going up in fourths or down in fifths. So like a. Right, so it's going up a fourth or down a fifth. And like on this old dog, going down, down a fifth, down another fifth. And they don't always have to be minor, normally the two is a minor chord. Because, uh, and the scale would be two, but I mean, if you're just descending in this like that the whole time, it doesn't matter too much. So, like for instance, um, Malt High Club, tons of their songs. Just uh, descending in fifths, four, seven, three, six, two, five, one. The thing, the, the chord progression on that one. So two, five, ones. It's going down two, five, ones, right? So that's what happens on this old dog, on the track, this old dog, and then. And the way it leads kind of goes out of key. This, all this music theory stuff is just uh, trying to give a reason uh, to explain or account for certain chord changes, so you can use it organize the information you had so it can be used right so another thing on and this old dog is it goes out of key right and he does that on dreams from yesterday as well so when I'm using these chord progressions it's changing keys all the time so it's just sort of the ways the chords relate to one another so so if you did that that's not okay as well right because um, the F at D minor is a relative minor of F they're a, a minor third apart Okay. Okay. So, but then the one thing you can do with that when I might is change this what would normally be minor to a dominant, like we do here. Temperex does that. Check my Temperex uh, video on that. He does that all the time. It's always changing the relative minor into a major chord. So that's how he seamlessly changes between keys or moves out of key there. It's because it's a minor third difference. I forgot the exact thing it's called, it's a kind of modulation, the name for it, but it's where you move up a minor third or down a minor third. Now on to Dreams from Yesterday. This is really big 2-5, two 2-5 five, two five ones here. That was a 2-5-1 there at the NC. Because this is basically a G13, it can be a minor 6 slash 9, don't worry about that too much, but... So this is a classic 2-5-1. Oh. Mild high clap after. That's a chorus of skip tracing. And that's a 2 5 one there at the end. And uh, he's basically setting up the whole time this big resolution. Down a, f down a fifth. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. Resolution is from there. That's also down a fifth. It would also have worked if you'd just gone like that. But yeah, the first one you start on is a major six nine, uh, major six slash nine, so it's got a six and a nine. If you want to know how to name major, major scales, uh, no, ma name your chords, it's a good place to start in terms of music theory, I have a video on that. Uh, with how to name chords with skip tracing, something like that, and there's also loads of people online to tell you how to name chords. So yeah, six and nine, because it's got all those, six and nine that goes up a degree so yeah when you're here it doesn't matter too much about keys it just matters how it's transitioning between chords so you're just going up a tone there uh, so that's it yeah You've got that common tone, right? That's another way it's easy to change chords. This is when you have a common tone. Again, skip tracing has that. It's the exact same note, actually. Can you 
scene. So this note, keep playing that note on there. Uh, that's what he does on Dreams from Yesterday. And then here we're just changing one tone from dominant, we're changing them from a major third to a minor third. And then boom, turn it into a dominant 13. Boom. So I mean, I guess that would kind of be uh, C major in that you're resolving to the C. But then that would put us in F. So, well, and what he does actually there, so it's kind of half C major and half G major. And the way he makes that not so obvious is by using notes in the vocal line melody that are in both C and G major scales, because there's a lot of overlap between the, in terms of the notes used in those scales. Uh, the only difference is F sharp, I think. So he just doesn't use an F sharp or an F. Yeah, so that's how he, another way he hides, makes it sound less distant, okay? Uh, yeah, and it's just about the difference in between, the interval between chords to make it sound a bit different but nice, okay? So that's all, and then two five, big 2-5-1 right on the, on the chorus. So why then? Okay, so that's just that's descending in in these fifths. See, D, D, D. I mean, apart from that change there, where it goes from a dominant to a minor chord, it's just straight going down, descending in two five ones. And this one, I think, one of the reasons it might work is because this to that is the same as this to that, really, because uh, minor G minor seven and B flat. Six pretty similar, and it shares that that same note, and that's that thing I was saying before about going up a minor th minor third. You can really screw around when you're going up minor thirds. So, so. Oh, you crying? It was you. Yeah, just to prove my point, it sounds. Just to prove my point, it's uh, interchangeable. Yeah, lots of these things is because they're interchangeable chords. Uh, and then after that, yeah, just straight down. Then there's a bit of a weird bit. In oh. oh, yeah, the, the only weird bit now that doesn't really conform to this rule of two five ones is it's going from this B flat dominant uh, nine. Oh, sorry, those are all dominant nines going down to an E minor, which is a bit weird because uh, I think that that could be tritone as a tritone substitution, but I don't think it is quite tritone substitution. Although there is a tritone difference. So that one, I don't have don't have the music theory chops yet to explain that transition, but I don't think it's particularly common. I mean. Yeah, it's pretty tough. But then that's E, e minor to A is uh, would be that, you know. Oh, oh. And that's that's a kind of a nice that's a, the descending thing. So E minor to A, even though it's fully open, it's still a, a two two five one kind of descending in fifths. And then I think it just goes back to after a while. So yeah, Dreams from Yesterday he said was his most, the song, one of the songs he was most proud of. Probably because it took the longest really in terms of figuring out the harmony, so... I mean, he must know a couple of tricks maybe, uh, in terms of music theory wise, or maybe not, maybe not, but... Or maybe just intuited by ear, figured out by ear that sounded kind of classic sort of jazz bossa nova. And the instrumentation facilitates that also in terms of his bossa nova little beep beep, drumming, wood chop, wood clicks. Um, so yeah, I might just go do a little bit of keys now, I guess. But yeah, two five ones is the one one of the chord progressions that turns up throughout the whole album. So I thought I'd use that to sort of explain why this old dog has a bit more of a that kind of feel to it, you know. And 
yeah, in terms of harmonic analysis, I do have a couple on still beating, and if people are interested, I can do do some more. Mm. Or if you just have questions, I might do a complete guide to how Mac makes music. Maybe that'd be pretty dope. I could do that and just go through all the chord progressions he uses. So, yeah, I hope that's okay. Dreams for yesterday. Just ask any questions if you have any. Yeah. Okay, I might just do a little bit on keyboards now. Um, oh, is that a bit blurry? Oh, well, it's gonna be a bit blurry. Anyway, so a bit on keyboards, right? Uh, I'm just going to mostly leave that to the reverb machine because it'll tell you the sounds and there's I've done quite a lot of analysis on the piano already I mean guitar already but one thing I'll say is kind of expanding on a point I kind of made before that um, I don't think he's so much to train so much of a trained musician whereas because for instance Marth High Club comes at it with um, not classic chord progressions but in a more sort of uh, trained way as in it's kind of study he's kind of studied it and so on whereas Mac comes from a more intuitive point, which, but but both of them, what they both have in common is that they don't want to really use classic, cliched chord progressions. They're both looking for an interesting uh, way of trying to make it slightly different. So, what I mean by Mac, not really. I guess he, I think he does know quite a bit of theory. You know, like he he named D minor seven in the piano time, and he's clearly figuring out the naming of the chord. So I think he knows a bit, right? But for instance, and he's admitted it himself that. He was kind of new to piano, at least at the time when he made uh, another one in Sal Days, when he just got a synthesizer pretty much. So, for instance, he uses, he always goes up one turn at a time, like in, in Chamber of Reflection. I think it's roughly that, right? These kind of chords where he's going up one at a time. Another example of that is uh, another one. See, he's going using the same kind of position, same chords, <laughs> down uh, one at a time. Which is quite funny. Not like it's, it's, it still comes up with a pretty interesting um, progression, but in fact, it comes up with chords that people don't really name so much. You know, that aren't really that commonly used or in that order. So what I mean, yeah, that's what I mean. What I kind of mean, he's sort of intuiting a way of doing it. Like uh, Temperex does that as well. I think just whatever lo looks and sounds nice, and I think they both probably know a bit of theory. So basically, without learning loads of theory, you can still come up with interesting ways and whatever sounds cool. Look at interesting kind of kind of unique little different patterns that you can use. Whereas, so like a classic multi club one is a oh, oh, sorry. Ooh. It's uh, basically it's just descending in fifths, you know. Uh, I have a tutorial on that if you want, but it's just going down fifths, a bit more uh, classic, classically, not classic like classical musically trained, but classically, a little bit more trained um, way of doing things. But the thing with this old dog is I, I haven't actually, I don't know how to play that any of them piano, but from, from what I've seen, or the bits of pieces I have done, so like, uh, actually I do know a bit, like I know, um, uh, what is the watching and fade away. And from the looks of things, same one f uh, for the first time. It looks like he's a bit, you know, a bit, um, a bit more well versed in piano now. I guess I don't know. It seems a bit more. He's not using going up in single tones one at a time. He's doing maybe slightly more interesting progressions. In fact, one of the progressions on one more love song is the sa is the same in that I showed in Dreams from Yesterday. The going from a minor nine to the D six slash nine, so or the thirteenth chord. Uh, it's, you know that one I showed in Dreams from yesterday. So, I mean, I could I'll probably do another lesson. Like I said, I'll probably do a complete how Mac produces makes music guide at some point. It might even be up to an hour long. So yeah, that's all I had to really say about piano. Yeah. So now for discussion. This is serious. Nah, no, it's not too serious. But uh, one thing people always do, lazy music journalists. They always say, like, uh, as a description for any other kind of music, they always say, oh, Mac DeMarco, Ariel Pink type vibe. I don't know if any of them actually listen to Ariel, some of Ariel Pink's. Because, I 
I mean, it's supposedly, you know, it's all like the, the originators of lo-fi music, but uh, that's a that's a Ariel Pink type song for you. So, no, I like I love that album. You know, it's not as bad or anything, but it's really uh, no one's really exactly copying that sound, are they? And it's just a bit lazy and um, not a dis no, I'm going so far as saying it's a disgrace, but it's um, not really fair on the artist. So what one that really annoyed me was Skip Tracing album review. Personally, I think that's one of the best albums ever. Now, that, obviously, I'm biased because I'm a huge fan, but uh, it's just super lazy, kind of saying it's Mac DeMarco, Ariel Pink for pretty much everything, and um, it just makes people kind of hate Mac DeMarco, Ariel Pink when it always comes up, and come up with fake miscon misconceptions about their music. There's this thing about him being major seven chord through a chorus pedal bullshit. Um, so. I'll give the guitar. I think maybe I mentioned this in the music theory section, but like uh, the only time Mac does a major seven chord is is that open. Uh, like I'm pretty sure they're imagining this sort of major seven. Mac's never used that chord. That's kind of uh, maybe Boy Pablo, Rex Orange County, or something. I don't know. So possibly they're the perpetrators. They're one of the reasons this uh, shit has been spreading. Probably not though. But, you know, if you look at things more deeply, like that, what I was saying with them, um, how people just use jazz as a kind of pretentious term, um, there's there's more to it than just major seven chords and chorus pedals. I hope I showed that in this video, you know? There's a lot going on there. Oh, shit, is this, this might be out of focus. Hopefully it's alright. Um, yeah, then what, other, what other things do I have on my list? Um, um, um. Oh, yeah, here's Neil Young thing. They're all connect. They're Canadian, but I don't know if they're obviously Canadian. You know, I don't think Canada comes into it much. But he, Max seems to think of Neil as some Canadian Canadian hero. Uh, what, what else do we? What else? What else? What else? Yeah, and then I mean, why 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 the suit? You might be asking, because uh, I don't know. Everyone always wears those um, the original Mac Mac look, but I think. Um, we're going for more of a Wes Anson, that's what it's going to, that's the style that's going to be appropriated. Initially, maybe he was appro appropriating kind of uh, manual worker lumberjack types. You know, and that was cool for a while, but maybe maybe we're going through a transformation, transfiguration into this. So that might that might happen. And I thought it'd be funny if some dweeb turned up to a Mac show in suits. That'd be pretty funny if one day people turned up to Mac, Mac shows in suits. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have more. I could go. I've got some deeper detail. What? What's yeah? What sort of discussion? If there's some kind of point that people want me to write an essay on, articulate nicely for them, I could probably I could probably do that for you. If you if there's any, like uh, this whole bed bedroom pop thing, um, lo-fi. I mean, I don't think people should really get any points for doing bedroom pop because. Everyone's pl making music in their bedroom at the beginning. There's actually I don't know of anyone who just started out in a studio. So, uh, and the DIYs will be like, oh DIY move, I, oh you're a beast. Everyone, everyone does that. So, pff, no point, no points there really. And then um, if you listen to the bedroom pop playlist on Spotify, I mean I like that it's different, different to most kinds of pop music. But they see themselves always as kind of indie non-conformist but if you listen to that playlist after a while all the songs are sound the same a bit i mean obviously i don't want to be too harsh because I, I do like a lot of it to some to some degree and um they do have their original uh unique sounds don't know how massively unique they are but they're fairly unique right you can tell one us from the other but after a while all the songs sound a bit similar on on bedroom pop like they're using the same instrumentation this uh faux, let's say faux jazz mate they're uh, faking Faking jazz knowledge, um, and I mean you don't even need a chord. You could just call it like more, harmon more interesting sounds. Just more, more interesting chords and uses of, say harmony. Even that sounds a bit. It's probably a bit too much. It's just a bit of a different way of doing things, you know. So, what I might do, and this is pretty big. I might try doing. Initially, what the goal, what one of the goals might be, is to build up to make a manifesto of where things need to move. I mean, but on the whole, I don't want to start a revolt or anything. I'm pretty pleased 
I think it's quite quite a nice little system going on with the whole bedroom pot. But then it, there are some questions I have in terms of how people get noticed. It doesn't seem to be a complete meritocracy. There is a lot of uh, promotion. You know, I don't know. I'm not really sure how the promotion things things work, but that might be for another day. But in terms of Max' influence on that, supposedly it all started with Ariel Pink and Mac DeMarco, but I'm sure there's lots of other people who get go unnoticed, like a uh, Stevie Moore, or Stevie Moore, something like that. His name is was doing this at ages ago. But what can you do? You just, you just got to study it. You got to study the music. A better being better ball. So yeah, maybe we could get. Maybe we could get a university guy, or um, a club, who knows? <laughs>